And he did a good job of that, and it's been an ordeal, I know. And I guess well, it's the back. Is a sweet guy, and I don't really mind it. Because they don't give, they don't uh, get too many danger signs printed on these cigarettes, and you don't smoke too many of them. Why? Uh, I am smoking too many of them, Mr. President. <laughs> well, I am doing it, I admit it. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand it, I can tell you that. I need some myself. <laughs> Uh, well, you tell me someday how you quit, will you? Because I want to, but I uh, simply don't have the guts to. Oh, well, you can't do it when going through what you are. I don't uh, want you to think about it now, but... Uh, uh, I've got the bad press on cigarettes. Uh, no. I'm hurting, I'm hurting your other legislation. No, not at all, not at all. You're getting a good press on everything. Uh, we named your boys yesterday. And, yes, sir. Uh, now, you checked, uh, I wonder, did you check tidings on, uh, uh, and uh, Booster on this, uh, Fred Benson? I didn't. I mentioned it to, to Barefoot, and I'm not sure that I, uh, that, that he did it. I did check Bobby on Weisel. That was fine. That's good. Well, uh, what I... I wasn't sure whether Vincent lived in or out. Uh, I would just tell him, to tell him that they didn't know you thought he lived in the district. Yeah. It's fine he's there, but it's the Chief Justice's son. And, oh, there's no problem with either of those senators. So, uh, so uh, that's... Uh, that's all right. Well, I guess that uh, uh, now the the civil rights uh, groups uh, are they reasonably happy with you? Oh yeah, yep, yeah, they're all reasonably happy. What are they going to do when they get through marching? What's it going to be the next one? Well, I don't uh, I don't know, Mr. President. I'm uh, I think King uh, would like to take a little rest. He's got some sore feet. <laughs> uh, I can't uh, say that some of these sick kids aren't going to continue to you know raise a little bit of hell. I think they will. But the more we can isolate it off into the small group way out there, the better off we are. And I think with the legislation and with Easter and uh, uh, one thing or another, we can do pretty well. But I don't want to give you the feeling or impression that because we get this voting bill quickly and because they've had their march that we know you know, turn our attentions to something else and forget about civil rights, because they'll continue to raise some hell. And uh, we'll just try to keep it under control. I want to get the military out of there just as quick as we damn well can. Uh, and, uh, today, they write, as soon as this dispersal goes, they'll haul into Montgomery and into the armory, get it back to the police taking over there in Montgomery. You so pretty... You're reasonably sure we can uh, defend this bill from the poll tax boys and from the 18-year-olds and so forth? Yes, Mr. President. I think we're in good shape, and uh, Dirk's staying very solid with us, and uh, he's got... Uh, we're going to have over 80 votes in the Senate for that bill. I don't think it'd be bad if they put you in the corner anyway uh, to uh, to say to them that the... And in, uh, in, uh, drafting it with the senators and in drafting it with the president, the president raised a question with you about the uh, poll tax, an 18-year-old. I have voted against statutory poll tax a dozen times yes, on, I know that. on the ground that they've always told me that you couldn't do it that way. And then I got the constitutional amendment and got it through. But uh, uh, I, I, I think it wouldn't be bad to just let it show that you would be advised, but you just didn't believe it. So you, you've already crossed that bridge. You well, studied it, you evaluated it, and you told him and you just didn't believe that you could uh, do it that way that might right. hurt, hurt the whole legislation. That's what you said, as I remember. That's what, yes, and that's what I've been testifying to, and I haven't brought you into it uh, on that. I can't. Uh, I just say the president. I, I, I said it was, not, it was my view. We didn't have the case to do this uh, uh, by statute. They didn't have the facts to do it by statute, that I personally was opposed to a poll tax. Uh, I put that on myself. Uh, I assume that you are too, Mr. President, that you don't like a poll That's tax. That's right. Oh, I've made speeches yeah. 20 years, statewide radio campaign, but I've taken in. this position, and I, I raised it with you, and you took the same position that uh, Senator Works did. He was Vicky's undersecretary and kind of an advisor of mine, political and legal, for many, many years, yeah. that he didn't think that we could repeal a poll tax by statute. And that the effective way was constitutional amendment. So I always voted against repealing it by statute, and I always supported it by a constitutional amendment in Texas, in the Texas Constitution. And I campaigned for it there, and Rayburn campaigned with us, and we bought statewide radio back before television at our own expense. 
and they tried to, and each time they beat us because the teachers get the money, yeah. and they, they wouldn't support us. Uh, but they used that a good deal on me in the campaign, and I don't think it would really hurt the record a bit. And uh, if you do, if you think it might involve me more than otherwise, well, don't do it, but give no. consideration to it. But if they give you an opening, I would just say that uh, the, uh, the president uh, uh, informed me that he had uh, had the opinion of other counsel in past years that it would be difficult to repeal the poll tax this route, but he asked me to fully explore it right. and give me uh, an give him an opinion and a recommendation because if it could be done, uh, he wanted to uh, Get that do that, and uh, he uh, he uh, uh, had an interest. He hadn't reached a conclusion, but he had an interest in uh, lowering the the age limit. And I told him after uh, carefully considering it by our best legal talent that in my judgment. He would uh, bog the bell down. This was not the way to do it, and we'll take this and then give uh, further study of these other matters. Right. I'll do that this morning, Mr. Uh, Mr. President. Uh, I said the reason for the low turnout in Texas was the poll tax. I hope that's right. Yes, I think so. I think it's right. I said I talked it over with several people. And I, yes, I think so. I, left I you think out. it's right. Uh, oh, I think it's right. I. I I think you that view. Oh, yes, sure, uh, sure I do. And I, I have said that, and I said it's disgraceful, and President Kennedy and I had a number of discussions about it. And I have forgotten, but it seems to me that he had a third of the population and almost as many votes. Yeah. Now, I may be wrong. What's Massachusetts? Uh, check it, but it's probably three million, maybe four. Yeah. What is it? you have any idea? I don't have the figures in front of me. We have about ten. I believe that uh, he has a million and a half votes up there, and we have a million and a half. Yeah. And he's got a third as many people. And the reason is that we got a poll tax. Yeah. It's not one that uh, that keeps the Negro from voting. He doesn't have a literacy test or anything yeah. like that. He just forgets to go pay this dollar seventy-five cents yeah. in the first year, and he doesn't have to pay back like Alabama something. He can go in the fr between January. But I damn near forget it every year myself. <laughs> and the governor of the state forgot it one year and was elected governor and couldn't vote for himself. So that's old Daniel, if they ever get you in a corner on him, just point out that uh, some of the highest officials uh, sometimes include themselves out, as Sam Goldwyn said, uh, by uh, uh, not having a poll tax. And old Daniel was running for governor, and they, they sprung it on him, and he couldn't vote for himself. And he ridiculed it so damn much that that might have been one reason he was elected, because the people didn't like it. But we've got this teacher thing, and that's kept us from repealing. That's yeah. the reason we don't have a vote. Well, that's what I, I said. Uh, and anything that you can say about the Mexican, uh, say it's not just a few counties in uh, in uh, Alabama, Mississippi necessarily, but uh, there are other places. Now, I'm just wondering how you're going to get to the bad counties of the Mexicans in Texas or the Negroes, where they... they I think we can do that under the existing legislation. I saw you said that last night. See, the thing is, we've been concentrating on Mississippi and Alabama yeah. and Louisiana. Now, if we have 110 lawyers and they get freed from that, I think we can do pretty well. We don't have the same problem with the judges, and I think we can do a pretty good job in those other sections. Now, Lindsey and Javits want to push with an amendment, so does Teddy Kennedy. And uh, I feel uh, obligated to stay with Dirksen on this. Yeah, well, I and, tell uh, him So uh, I'm going to treat I treated Javits a little bit hard yesterday because he just rubs me the wrong way, frankly. Yeah. Uh, but I'll be a little softer with Teddy today, yeah. and then uh, just see what uh, Dirksen's pleasure on this because he's really the key there and McCulloch in the house. And, I, I think I've got to. I think that's good. Strategy. I can't. I can't I'd move follow. away from there. Not a bit. I'd follow. That's what you're right. I'll let you go. Okay. God bless you. I'll see you later in day. Okay. Bye.